Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. Jason Sankovic here. I'm going to show you here. We're going to follow a rub line here that I've never seen before. Now, I, I know this area. I have a stand right up here behind me, and I've hunted it many times. I've killed three deer out of here over the years, and it's a great area. Um, but uh, I haven't been in here in about a year and a half as far as hunting. Now, I did show this area in a couple other videos a few years ago. Um, as well, but I just came in here to check it out was looking at this marsh edge I got over here and just seeing what's what out here and I, I found this rub line We're gonna take a look at it. Also a lot of people ask me why I carry a saw if it's illegal to uh, Cut branches in the state of Michigan on public land. I don't use it to cut branches I use it to hook on this hook on here a lot I use it to grab branches pull them down so I can reach them I got paracord in my back pocket that I take all the inner parts out and I use the white strands of it individually I got 20 feet of regular paracord now pull out those strands i can tie branches off but this lets me get up and grab branches that are high and pull them down i can extend this saw out and lay it in the marsh grasses and in the cattails and stuff and then i lay it long ways and i step on it it pushes that stuff all over and gives me a, a clear shooting lane uh, i use this thing for so many different things when i want to cut dead sticks up and uh cut things apart and use them to block trails i can do that real easy and it's also a fantastic walking stick for what branch i might have to tie back uh that kind of stuff and if i'm in Pines, which I'm always very often in pines a lot of these branches on these are dead they're just dead and snap and I can extend this out hook that hook on there and just yank and it's pop 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 and come right down on uh, those dead branches break right off same with the poplar so uh, even though I cannot technically cut a branch I'm not doing that but the saw is so valuable for so many different things when I'm in the woods so I'm tired of people asking me uh, why I carry one when I can't use it to cut branches you don't need it to cut branches but there's so many uses you can do legally to make it where you can get better shooting opportunities and add cover you know you get into a lot of these trees i can take that thing open that up and use that hook that's right inside of here and hook those branches and pull them down enough reach them over and then let them go on the other side of another one and they create more cover and open a shooting lane so these things are super valuable um very very valuable and when i do hunt private land like i said i can cut whatever i want to it's nice to have a saw so but anyway we are going to go ahead and follow along on this rub line and see what we got here. So let's take a peek. Uh, so let me actually put you to zoomed regularly. There we go. All right, so come out of here. I see this rub right here. You can see this rub on this pine. Now I see another one up there. That's what made me think of doing this video. But see, you got a rub right there, fresh rub. Um, look at how high that rub is on that pine right there. That's pretty up there. You can see the major trails coming out of here. That pine right there, right there, I hunt from that tree right there. I've showed it to you in many other videos, but I've been in there catching all of the intersection activity that comes out of this point right here, which is where I have another stand set up at, but comes out of there, catches all this travel through here. I've shown this before, but now this is all fresh rubs for this year that I've not ever seen in here before. Look at that and look at the height. That, that rubs up there. I mean, that's almost nipple high on me. That's pretty, pretty incredible. And uh, you can see the trails coming through here. Like I said, great spot. Look at the trails through here. Trails through here. There's a reason that I'm in that tree right there. It's a fantastic setup for this. And uh, and then you got this one here. Look at this rub. Another one. Again, look at how high up that rub is. That's nice to see. Shredded. He broke the branches off there. Everything really nice. Coming in back up through here. Now keep in mind in fall, in October, you can see all these bent over ferns, okay? This stuff is, is waist high and thick in here, okay, for most of the season. Right now it's not, that's why I'm out here. Uh, I think that rub line is going to be on that trail, but I'm noticing, look at we got more rubs right here. All those bushes right there, shredded, 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 so I'm seeing that. But I'm assuming this rub line is following probably this major trail through here. And then look at this intersection trail. Look at this massive trail that runs right through there. And again, that's my tree right there, that double tree right there. Sweet, simple, and easy. Good shooting. Like I said, I love this spot. A lot of people wouldn't hope, hunt this. They're like, oh, that's way too open. It's not open. Again, this is, you know, four feet tall with ferns and stuff. And all these little, all these bushes and branches are all leafed. Okay, they have leaves all over them. This is this is four foot tall, basically swamp in here, you could say, is what this basically is through here um, in October through early November when the activity's here. So, like I said, that spot, fantastic spot in here. You can see all the trails we've passed already. But now let's see where this rub line, I'm assuming he's going to continue along this way because I know where this goes. This goes to a point out here. I see another rub right there. Um... 
but I would imagine he'd be going this way. That's what I would assume. Um, oh, yep, I see another one over here. Like I said, just an incredible area here. Moving slow because I'm looking as I'm going. But I do see a rub right there. Yep, right there is another rub. Interesting. So he breaks off this way. That's funny because I would have actually thought that he would have went that way personally. But so he's going this way. Good to know. He cuts back in here. But these rub lines will help you identify good areas to hunt. I mean, there, there's no denying. I'm not a, I mean, scrapes are good to know they're there, but rubs, I really like the rubs because they tell you where a buck is comfortable moving during the pre-rut, which is when most of the rubs are made. And that's when, and they're comfortable moving there, moving through that area then. So that gives me a lot of advice and makes me feel good. Um, on the same note, you do got to keep in mind what might be nighttime, what might be daytime. Now with where we just came from, with how open that is, in the right now if it was like that all the time i would consider that to be nighttime activity but knowing what that looks like in in the fall knowing that it's four feet tall full of super thick stuff i i'm not uh, even for a second thinking that they'd have a problem doing that during daytime so that's good to know it's also the reason that i have that stand there um but you could use that to your advantage and come back into here and start looking for where to set up and why. All right, so what do you do here? Rubs usually, a line of rubs will usually guide you if you take your time and learn from them. So what do we got? Oh, there he is right here, okay? So now I'm not seeing any there, but we did see him turn here from that rub there. Look at this tree right here, shredded again. So he's telling, you know, he's kind of giving you the heads up here. He's letting me know where he wants to go. So he's coming through. Um, and I'll bet what he's doing is he's bedding right out in the edge of this stuff right here. Because this is that point. Look at this trail here that's here too. Real thick trail right here. Another trail right there. And then you have this big marsh. This, uh, this dogwood and, uh, tag elder swamp here. Another good trail right there. Um, I'm not seeing more rubs here right now another good trail right there see look at all the trails we got cutting across this little point out to that point out to here so you use this knowledge to your advantage you take this and i'll show you how we'll do that here in one second what i would what i would take away from this look at that trail there look at the trails here same one we just saw on the other side as i just spun around here um so we know now i'm looking for him to give me any more clues if he's going to give me anything else. Now, there's a real good possibility in my assumption. I'll tell you what here in one sec. But let me finish looking here. And I do not, even though I'm already a little wet, I do not have the right boots to head out there to show this to you right now. Uh, wasn't my intention for coming out here that, for that. I don't have the luxury of it right now. Because uh, that can be probably knee deep in here. So I'm not doing it. But um, you can see here, more trails. Look at right through here. More trails. All right, so now what I'm assuming, because we do not see any more rubs in here, but we had that perfect rub line that came through, my assumption would be, and I would want to verify this time of year, but I bet he is betting right on that point right there. I'll bet he's betting right out by those two trees, somewhere right out there on those points. That's leading him to there. Now we're going to walk over there and see if those rubs come off that point and see if he's circling in and Jay hooking into there. But those rubs are showing he's coming into betting. And if he comes into betting, he's going to come in and probably Jay hook in with the way the wind's going. Right now, the wind's coming this way. So he'll rub his way in like he did. He'll come in over here and he'll J-hook his way back into there. Um, so it does make perfect sense. Now, we're going to go over there and look at that point to verify. But what I would do, knowing that, and knowing that we have so many deer trails here and so much sign here, is we would set this up for a stand, which I'm actually going to do while I am here right now. We need to pick a tree um, cause this is gold and I like this spot here cause there's so many trails right here. We have that main trail that he came in on, but there's a ton of them here and they're going in multiple directions. The majority of it cutting across here, but I want to see, actually I lied. I'm going to go look at that point first and then come back. I'm not going to jump the gun and get ahead of myself, but I am thinking that, uh, right here is going to be a pretty good spot. And I'm thinking that that tree right there or that tree right there is going to be, a tree that I'm going to basically mark on my GPS as a setup point because you got all these trails coming through here 
you got the trails coming through there yeah actually i think it's going to be probably this tree right here set up right on this side and uh be able to shoot this uh that is what i'm thinking see if i set up that tree that's too much i can't shoot through that crap now again i can tie all these back i could take these sticks that are leaning in there hook them and pull them back over and tie them to other trees and clear some stuff out but what a, what a pain in the butt to do it's better to find one that's going to give me the shooting that i need and I need to cover the trails that are going, there's those four trails coming through there, including this one here. There are four trails that cross this right here in a 15 yard area. That tree lets me shoot all of them. That tree lets me shoot all of them too. But we do have a trail coming out that one that that buck came in on was over there. This tree will let me shoot that. So uh, it's just a matter of picking the best tree here. It's gonna give us the best bang for the buck. But let's, uh, let's before I do that, just because we're here let's go take a peek at this uh look at a fresh poop down there not that that matters right now because it's winter time um but uh the rubs are what tell me this is a good place because the rubs are usually made i mean there's nothing rubbing trees right now they don't even have antlers so the rubs are during hunting season and he's comfortable using this place during hunting season obviously look at it, it's a good place now let's check this point this is that point um and see what we can see but i'll bet he's out there deeper in and i can't I'll bet I can't get to where he is. But look at these trails come out of here and cross this point. Go right up and over. See how it's a point here? You can see we have that marsh there. You can see there's marsh there and you can see this high ground point that comes through here. So I'll bet he's betting right out here on this point along the edge of this area um but now if i hunt this back where we were just at i have the capability of killing anything that comes in and off of this point anything that jay hooks into that point in the swamp and anything that cuts the edge of this and doesn't come down the point but parallel parallels along the edge of it old rubs so i like this spot a lot uh but i do not like being out here on the point because it's, you can see, very limited compared to what's actually up there where they're crossing across this. So for me, I want to be up here back where I originally planned, where those rubs are going to take me where I need, they're going to show me what I want, and I gain this stuff, okay? When you're down on that point, you're losing all of this, all of this transitional trails that are coming through here, all of this shine that is working their way through here paralleling this and not actually going on that point. Look at all of it. I mean, look at the trails through here. Look at this. Look at all this. I mean, if you're out there on that point, I don't get access to any of this stuff. So I want that. So I want to be where I get the best of both worlds. I get anything coming out of that point that's gonna head that way. I get all that transitional traffic that's coming through there. And now I just need to pick that tree uh, that I want that's going to give it to me. And it's going to be one of those two that I showed you. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up. And uh, thanks for watching. Talk to you in a bit. Bye.